It's time for Windows Weekly, and uh, the latest from Paul and Mary Jo will be talking about uh, how Microsoft and the iPad coexist or not. We'll uh, talk about a Windows 8 reader, e-reader, is that a possibility? And Office 15, a lot of news coming up next on Windows Weekly. Stay here. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Windows Weekly is provided by CashFly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. This is Windows Weekly with Paul Therod and Mary Jo Foley. Episode 253, recorded March 22nd, 2012. The Secret Life of Windows. Windows Weekly is brought to you by Ting.com. Ting saves you big and gives you billing clarity for mobile phone service. Try their online savings calculator and save $50 on your device purchase at Ting.com slash Windows. And by Audible.com. To download the free audiobook of your choice, go to audible.com slash windows. It's time for Windows Weekly, the smoking hot edition. With Mr. Paul Therat in 80 degree weather in Dedham, Massachusetts. Hey, Paul. How are you? Spring is here. Yes. Briefly, so it comes sputtering in and then goes away and then comes back briefly and comes back again. Well, it is March. In like a lion, out like a lamb and all that. Mary sure. Jo's in New York City. Is it hot there too, MJ? It is. Oh, how nice. Is how nice for you. Here in beautiful downtown Petaluma, California, it's 54 degrees. Oh, wow. <laughs> and raining. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> it sucks. <laughs> actually, wait a minute. No, it's now 49 degrees. <laughs> it's actually cooling off. It will reach a high of 55 under overcast skies. Overnight low, 35 degrees. Tomorrow, partly cloudy, 56 degrees in the city. Welcome to Windows Weekly FM. Where Paul Therat, the sweet sounds of Paul Therat. The Mitchell. cool jazz stylings of Windows Weekly. <laughs> oh, Lord. We call that the Wednesday afternoon format. 53 degrees in the city. Good Wednesday afternoon to you. Uh, okay. I don't. Uh, we might as well just get this out of the way. Yep. There is an iPad. A new one. I've heard that. Yes, there is. <laughs> there is. Yep. And I got to tell you, I don't know. I hope I'm not saying anything out of school here. But before the show, both you and Mary Jo were saying you wished well, Microsoft. Go ahead. You, I'll let no, you, you say no, no, it. You, uh, well, you say it. Well, okay. So, you want me to say it? I, I'll say it. I you think people said it. I'll it give you the, the, the caveat. Many have a caveat. said it. Many have said it. That why didn't, Mike, why didn't Microsoft just eschew, yeah. forego Windows 8 and the tablet yeah. interface and just do Windows Phone on a tablet and leave it at that? Because that's essentially what Apple's done. This is iOS right. is, is iPhone on a tablet. You know what, though? The problem with that approach is it never would have worked. As much as I would have personally enjoyed it and loved to have seen it happen, it just would have failed miserably. What's you know, missing? Um that Microsoft is not Apple. You know, I, I think, um, as, as someone pointed out uh, on my blog comments today, you know, in a post that I had about uh, an issue around this high DPI stuff, you know, Microsoft, as always, does their own thing and Apple does their own thing. And um, maybe there's some logic to that. You know, maybe, maybe that's where Microsoft has their best chance to offer something that is different. You know, the, it goes back to that argument we've had in the past where, Nobody wants something that looks exactly like an iPad that isn't an iPad, right? If they wanted that thing, they would just get an iPad. Um, maybe it is the differences that make it, you know, more uh, viable as an alternative. If that makes sense. I don't know, but I still, I still can't help but wish yeah. we yeah. could have had Windows Phone OS on tablets and Windows 8, like looking more like Windows 7, like an incremental upgrade on PCs. Yep. Yeah, actually, but and no. by the way, if they had done that, they could have devoted engineering resources to making Explorer look more like Metro, which mm. is a lot of people say they really mm. want. Because it isn't. And, no, it's nothing like it. And, and that might have been interesting, you know, mm. where uh, you have some sort of a family resemblance between the products. But, you know, Windows is, is a desktop and traditional workhorse kind of OS and whatever this other thing, Windows Phone or whatever you want to call that, becomes the system for highly mobile devices and so this is an abject fantasy but yeah i i, I it's something i think I just, about as well I, you know i, I kind of thought that 
when I first saw Windows 8, uh, mm -hmm. the, the developer preview, that they might be overloading Windows by trying to put a, a, the tablet interface and the desktop interface. It was maybe too much, and maybe it would have been more sensible to say, look, we're going to have an OS 4 that's, that's sure. purpose-built for a tablet. We already do have one. It's, it's called the Windows Phone 7. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. and then continue with the desktop. I'm well, sure Microsoft had these debates internally, uh, and and of course and I could see then, a credible reason yes. for doing what they did. Yep. Yeah. I, and actually, to play just to play devil's advocate, I mean, um, even on a purely desktop-based system, you know, like my my car, the, the computer I'm using right now, big screen, huge tower system, keyboard and mouse. I write. I mean, it's what I do. I'm going to be working in this environment for a long time to come. Um, there's something to be said for the fact that a lot of the system elements, the things that kind of come in from the sides and the top, you know, uh, the notifications, search, um, the start screen and the app search and file search and uh, all that kind of stuff, you know, the charms, the application switching, um, all of those system level services are still Metro, even when you're using the desktop. And so that in its own way provides you with a it sort of forces you, I guess, but it provides you with a way to become familiar with that stuff so that maybe it's easier to make that transition to a full metro environment when you're using a tablet. And maybe going back and forth between the two won't be as hard as it might otherwise have been, right, if they had just done a completely different system. Because, you know, the other system would have competed with Windows. Um, it might have diluted the brand. And, and you know, I, I think we can all understand the basic arguments that Microsoft must have made to justify the decision sure. that it did make. Unified. Unified. Well, they, always had... say, they say tablets are PCs, right? right. They, they don't want you to think of these as not being PCs. That may be so, where they've gone wrong, Yeah. to be honest. <laughs> that, that may yeah, be actually, overdoing it. I noticed in that most recent post, you know, Microsoft goes to great pains with language, actually, and uh, it's something to pay attention to in those blog posts. They talk about Windows devices a lot. But in that most recent post, uh, I'm not saying that I actually don't know that the word, the phrase Windows device doesn't appear in it, but th they talked about Windows PCs again, <laughs> you know, and it was the first time in a mm. while that I kind of noticed it where, you know, it was like they were talking about PCs. And I think they were trying to draw a distinction between uh, a lot of different things. I mean, uh, big screen devices, which you would typically see, obviously, on a desktop computer, a PC, and then small screen devices that maybe have high DPI or PPI, depending on how you think of it, you know, a, a very dense display of pixels, um, but on a smaller form factor, which would be like a device, you know, like the iPad, uh, the new iPad, uh, obviously is a high DPI type display. Anand but, says that they're, they're actually talking about high res uh, displays, right? Yeah, that's yes. the post we're talking about. This is a, yep. There's a new post on building Windows 8 oh, that came out this week. Oh, that's the Sanofsky post. Okay, okay. Yeah, the Sanofsky post about... They don't say this in the headline, but it's like, hey, we can do retina displays, too. That's kind of what that post is. Like, <laughs> well, they had basically. revealed this earlier. I mean, they, they talked about this at Build. And I wrote a post last week when the iPad 3 came out, the new iPad, that comparing it to Windows 8, where, you know, where does, where's the biggest um, area of um, advantage for the iPad over Windows 8? And I, I actually do think it's the display. And, and the reasons are many, but to just kind of boil it down, you know, Apple makes an iPad, and it has a display, and now everyone targets that. So everything will be beautiful and seamless, and it will always work the same. Um, Apple also did something um, which I think is appropriate for the device where even though the, the display has four times as many pixels, uh, the, the start screen is not tiny little boxes. You know, it's the same exact thing. So if you were to load a web page in the browser on that machine, it doesn't look tiny. It fills the screen just like it did before. Right. And if you put it next to an iPad 2, they look the same. It's just that the new one is sharper. And I think for that kind of device, that was the right approach. The, uh, the post that you're scrolling through talks about the, uh, the flow aspects they have, these um, uh, capabilities they have where the same app can flow differently depending on the orientation of the display and also the size of the display. And this but is I'm something sure you need to solve. But this yep. is different from what you're talking about? Well, no, no. It, it's a different approach is, what, I guess, what I'm saying. And... and We'll see. I mean, it's a 1.0 thing. That's the problem. Um, Microsoft is coming at this for the first time. The other thing is that Windows has another environment called the desktop. And the way that the desktop handles scaling is very different and right. horribly inferior, by the way. Um, you know, one of the nice things about Mac OS X, even though it is still a bitmap-based display, is that Apple has always done a good job of making very large interface elements so that as you scale them up, they look beautiful no matter 
how big your screen is and how you know big you make things. Whereas anyone who's done that in Windows knows it, it looks terrible. I mean, um, if you have a high res laptop, for example, and you think, wow, I can't see any of the icons are so small, I'll bump it up. And you bump it up to like 125%, and it, look, it looks terrible. Right. You know, every time. I mean, it's it's one of those awful things where neither one of them is right. And I don't. Well, I know. I mean, that's not something they're going to fix in Windows 8. So, you know, for those of us on the desktop, the, you know, one point whatever billion people, um, that's not getting any better in Windows 8. And and so I'm glad they're making those moves on the other side, but I, I still think that's a, a major area of concern because we are heading toward a future, obviously, of high dense, you know, very high density displays. I'm, I'm curious. Well, we don't really know. We don't know how any of this is going to look, really, because they're telling us how many high dis high resolution display they're going to be out there and what the resolutions are going to be. We, but we don't know these because we can't see any of the hardware. So we don't really know how it's going to work. Well, and the, the other thing is they're targeting 1366 by 768 is sort of what I think of as the reference platform for any app yeah. or for any device, you know, so you're always going to be looking at it to look on that um, display resolution. Very common today in, say, like a 13-inch notebook computer for that to be the resolution. Um, that's great, but that's, you know, that's not what Apple does. Apple comes and they release this device this year that has some insane resolution, and they, they've just raised the bar. And so here we are toiling away to release an OS that's going to come out in the fall, hopefully that targets last year's displays. And, you know, they have to do that for backwards compatibility purposes and so forth. They have a much larger market to uh, serve. But see, that's the dual-edged nature of Windows, right? You are humongous. You you tack everything on the Windows, but then you also have to make sure that it just works for basically everybody. And that's not what Apple does, right? I mean, that's the differences in those two approaches. Apple throws away the old thing, and they, they just do something new. It also feels like Apple's doing one thing at a time, kind of. Uh, sure. it, it feels like Windows is fighting a war on a, on 100 fronts. Microsoft is, and that's difficult. Well, uh, yeah. I as mean, you know, right, as a so, student of World War II, uh, yes. the Germans yes. were unable to fight on two fronts. And, uh, uh, and, and, and I think that it's, it's, it's right. generally considered a good idea to fight on, on one front. Not only that, would, Apple's got the high that. ground because they're three, three years ahead. Yeah. Yeah. The problem is Microsoft is actually facing Apple in both of those other fronts, right? I, mean, I know. It's, got, it's like the iPad, which is the target, you know, the tablet market, which means the iPad. Right. And then there's the Mac, which is the only other viable contender on the desktop. Yeah, but nobody's fighting the Mac. Who needs to fight the Mac? Well, <laughs> the, Mac is the Mac is Mussolini. <laughs> the Mac is just your funny little Italian friend. All right. So they're fighting previous versions of Windows then, plus the Mac. That's more. That's more like it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, no, Windows I did not has... violate Godwin's law. I'm not saying Microsoft is Nazis. I'm I'm not saying that. <laughs> I'm saying we have learned from the history of warfare, and because Paul Thorat is a great student of World War II, I'm just trying to put it in terms that uh, Germany makes... could have defeated the Soviet Union. Actually, the biggest mistake they ever made was declaring war unnecessarily in the United States. But let's not get into World War II right you now. You see Leo. what I'm saying? You're, you see where <laughs> I'm going? Your point, your point stands. Your point stands. <laughs> <laughs> Not to mention the Russian winner and then, you know. Sure. So, uh, no, I think it's fascinating. And I wonder if, here's what I would predict, that in the next few months, Microsoft's going to keep its ear to the ground and uh, be listening to rumblings from the enterprise side. And would, does I almost feel like this, this, this talking about, this return to talking about PCs is the beginning of a little bit of a retrenching from Microsoft on the tablet thing and on but, the on the on the on the uh, inter interface and all of that cuz to reassure when uh, uh, enterprise yeah right that well we're not I, we're not going to make a massive change here i think they must have know. had that conversation a long time ago though right in other words but i think they when didn't the iPad know. came out I, well I, but i think a lot of companies went to Microsoft a year ago or a year and a half ago and said hey um, a lot of our employees are looking for these ipad things we don't like them because they're not highly manageable. Uh, are you going to make an iPad? Uh, you know, and Microsoft, you know, it, arguably you could say the path to least resistance for Microsoft was to make Windows into a tablet because really, Windows is all you ready. think that enterprise is calling is saying we like these, we want more of these? No, no, they do not like <laughs> them, but they're saying we feel like, like these things in. are inevitable. Ah, and yeah. if, can't if, help if, it. If they have yeah. to happen, 
We want it to be something that we right. can manage. We fought the iPhone and we lost. Yep. Right. Yep. So let's not yep. have the same thing happen on the there's desktop. There's a real, I, I mean, there, there's a real acceptance of this consumer right, uh, consumerism of IT thing. I think that consumerization of IT. Right. That uh, it, it doesn't mean they're embracing it necessarily. Some probably are. But I think for a lot of companies, it's just... They, they're resigned to it. The CEO comes in and says, you know, these things are great. We ought to have more of these things. And the IT department's going, uh, uh. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> How do I create a build? That's what I want. I want an $800 slab of <laughs> glass and plastic that someone could leave in a cab. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. How do we make it secure? How do we yep. standardize it? All sorts of things. How do we manage it? I, All sorts of things. You know, yeah, I don't know. Sure. I still don't think, though, that Microsoft's really thinking first and foremost about what the enterprise cares about with Windows really? 8. Really? Why not? I think, no. Um, I, I think they, I, I think, I keep feeling like this is what they're doing with Windows Phone, right? Like when they made the first version of Windows Phone, it, they made it consciously into a product for consumers, pitched it to consumers, made sure the apps that were available were for consumers. And now... I feel like this is where they're going with Windows 8. Um, it, they're, like if you look at the apps that are the demo apps, it's like cut the rope and a cookbook. You, you don't really see them talking <laughs> about ERP on, <laughs> on Windows 8. Although I will say they did, they did demo this week their own ERP, like a sample version of what it could look like on Windows 8. But it's, that's like a 2013, 2014 thing wow. in their minds. So I think initially the focus of Windows 8 is consumers. And I think as they go forward and add service packs or service the operating system in whatever way it ends up being serviced, um, that it'll become more friendly to the enterprise. But I really don't think that's the group of people they thought of when they developed this. Do you, Actually, that, No, that you, what you just said is right. It's absolutely right. I think yeah. that for Microsoft, they can, they can, one of the responses they can give to the enterprise is like, you already have this thing that works great. If, if you can't use a tablet for whatever reason, we have PCs today and they work great. So yeah. uh, we, we have some evolutionary improvements. You can roll out Windows 8 and Windows 7 side by side in your enterprise. You can roll out Windows 7. We couldn't care less. Uh, just keep buying Windows, please. And uh, yeah. <laughs> we don't care which one it is. And, and that's fine because, you know, as we've said in the past, I think, you know, as far as the markets where window was, Windows was kind of lagging behind, I mean, the consumer market is the clear one. I mean, the, the business stuff is right there. All the manageability stuff has been there for a long time. It works great. So, yeah, absolutely. And, and the one that they are focusing on the enterprise, or the, the tablet that they will try to sell to the enterprise is the x86 version. It's not the ARM version. Um, that, yeah, that right. to, I think, to them is totally a consumer play. Um, and I'll be surprised if they do much of anything at all to push that form factor to business users. Though they won't want them anyway because they're just right. exchange active sync. I mean, they're they're not highly manageable devices. You can't run desktop apps on those. Yep. So, yep. Yeah. I mean, I suppose for forward-leaning places that, that don't have any legacy app requirements other than, say, on a website or something that, um, you know, maybe those would be okay. And that would be a, probably a cheaper and less expensive to manage kind of device. Um but yeah, I don't, I don't think, I don't think Huawei devices are going to make any inroads with businesses at all. Moving along, I think we've, <laughs> I think we've, I think we've uh, terminated this con, con, con conversation here. It's, you it's have over. been terminated. Your, your is over. Thank you, citizens. Well, we didn't, we didn't uh, mention, we did not mention the uh, Microsoft internal ban on purchases of iPads. What? This, this was. Yeah, this yeah. is kind of a funny little story this week. That's um, a bomber, right? He, that's this is the same guy who stomped on an iPhone, right? <laughs> so, so uh, I don't know if it was Balmer or or if it's more like Kevin Turner, who's the COO, who's behind this. But supposedly, based on a memo somebody forwarded me, um, they are, they've decided no longer can their sales and marketing teams use corporate funds to buy iPads or. Um, Max. See, this mirrors this mirrors the conversation it. that's going on in enterprises all over the country. It is right. They're um, eating their own dog I food. Say, you don't. The one group yeah. at Microsoft you don't want out there sales. with iPads and yeah. Macs is yeah. your sales force, right? Oh my god, of course. <laughs> Actually, this you don't is a problem in my company. You want to have an iPad. <laughs> yeah. if you're no, a lot of, I'd a lot like of to show you Microsoft's with... new strategy on this fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> right, using Keynote. Um, yeah. You know, a, a lot of the people I work with also want iPads, or some of them have iPads. And, I, you know, the argument I keep having to these people is like, guys, um, 
we, we work at a Windows publication here that what you're doing is stupid. You made your bed. And it, now you got to you know, sleep in it. It's just, uh, yeah. And, I, I, and I, thank I, goodness there's so many Windows on ARM tablets out there so that they can choose from some really wonderful So that is the, uh, of course, the Catch-22 yeah. of this decision. Yeah. Yes. Hmm. Well, but but no. you know what? I, I I can't argue with this. I mean, uh, no, they have. To you can use it. a laptop. Deal with it. And, and they're Sorry. saying they're saying the outside guys. They're not saying the, you know. I mean, obviously, programmers and everybody else is probably you know taking these things apart. The, C, the CEO of uh, Ford does not drive a Toyota. Actually, he does. Yikes! <laughs> I asked Alan Mulally. He says I never drive Fords. I drive everybody else's cars because I have to know the competition. So you've met this guy. Yeah. Oh, I know Alan you very met, well. Yeah, he's a, he's a good you friend. You have to tell him that I idolize this man. He's one of the I great don't. CEOs uh, yeah. in this country. And I, uh, I, I don't know if people know this. There's a new book about him that is incredible. Oh, good. Because yeah. I, I read about about him in a, well, I guess actually a number of other books about the auto industry. But um, he was at Boeing uh, yeah. previous, right? Yep. They brought him in. Um, that guy's amazing. Brilliant. Yeah. And I can say, people are saying, oh, you're bragging, you're name dropping. No, Alan kissed me the last time I saw him on, on the cheek. But kissed me so i think that that counts as like i think he knows who i am unless he kisses strangers a lot he's a very friendly fellow well, no i no i uh, every time i talk to him i am blown away by his yeah. intelligence his integrity and his vision and he really um it's a values driven company which i find very interesting and i i think that that's unusual in uh, in big big companies and he really is doing that um anyway how did we get off on that <laughs> oh, yeah. oh the, the, you were saying the CEO of Ford <laughs> wouldn't uh, drive another person's car. But in fact, that's exactly why he does, because it's important that he knows what's out there. Uh, but I'm sure Steve Ballmer tries other stuff, although I know Bill Gates would not let his kids buy iPhones or iPads. Didn't Melinda say that? We're not allowed to own yeah. Apple products? Yeah. Right. Yeah. So and, maybe, um, maybe you know, not. If, if they, I would, all I can say is the Windows 18 better be using iPads yeah. right now. Yeah, <laughs> you know they better be the looking developing hard. The operating system yeah. better be because that's who you're competing with, and I bet they are. And I mean, the other team, of course, it's using them as a team, supposedly developing Office for the iPad, right? I mean, what are you going right. to do there? Right, not use them. No, no. This is sales and marketing. This is the group called SMS and G at Microsoft. So it's like forty thousand people. It's it's a huge wow. group, but um, still. No, it makes sense. The outside guys it should does. not be carrying iPads no. or Macintoshes. <laughs> that just does not send the right signal. You want to send the signal. Anything you can do with an Apple, you can do better with a with a Microsoft product. Yeah. That I mean, obviously. Um, you don't see the uh the Rico copier guy carrying around Xerox products. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he should, but kind of he... heavy. <laughs> <laughs> um, are we done with the iPad? I, I, I don't want to rush you or anything. No, I think we're done. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, we're going to take a break. We come back and talk more. We are uh, we are talking Windows. I'm sorry. It was a, there was a little Apple interlude there, but you have to. That's the big story. And I think uh, um, really yeah, it is it we, is important as, that, as, as Microsoft moves to Windows 8 to look at what's going on. And no, I did not kiss him back. So <laughs> I would have kissed him back. I hugged him really. I gave him a, a manly hug. Right. A bro hug. <laughs> Let's talk about Ting. Here's another guy I kiss, or I would kiss. I'm so happy. Uh, Elliot Noss, who is the CEO of Two Cows. Um, Two Cows, of course, is the creator of Hover.com. They are there. This is a brilliant company that is designing uh, its products to once again kind of reinvent businesses. If you're really a really good CEO, that's one of the things you do. How can we take a business? This is what Steve Jobs did. How can we take the music business and reinvent it? How he's look they were look they're now they're looking how to take the TV business and reinvent it. Uh, Elliot said, "How do we take the cell phone business and reinvent it? This thing sucks. Uh, cell carriers are the most hated people in the world. What can we do better?" And he created Ting. First of all, great name, T-I-N-G dot com. The idea of Ting is to provide you with a cell plan that actually works for you. What a novelty in this, in this day of ETFs and two-year lock-ins and, you know, you pay for stuff you never use. Ting uses a Sprint, so if you're a, it's a Sprint uh, MVNO, so if you uh, have good Sprint coverage, and, and most of us do, especially good data, then you're going to like this. But here's the key with Ting. Here's the Ting thing. You will love... They've got some great devices. They're all Android. I'm sorry. They don't have a Windows phone yet. Um, but I'm going to work on Elliot to get one. 
Uh, in, in a couple of weeks, you're going to get the, the Samsung Galaxy S2 4G. This is my favorite phone on Sprint. This is such a good phone. Sprint calls it their Epic Touch 4G. It's essentially the same phone. This is the one I'd recommend. Now, notice the prices are a little higher because they are not subsidizing these uh, with locking you into two years. Look at the plans and you'll see what I mean. So they sell minutes, messages, and megabytes separately. Now, you might say, oh, I want to bundle them. No, you don't. You want to unbundle them because everybody uses it differently. Some people use a lot of minutes, uh, a lot of text messages, but no data. Most of us use very few minutes, a medium amount of text messages, and lots of data. So pick the size plan you want. Pick how many devices you want. This is why it's great for small business. All the way up to 20 devices, you pay a $6 per device, period, per month. And, of course, you always get free voicemail, picture and video messaging, three-way calling, caller ID, tethering and hotspot, and a lot more. That's free. But here's the beauty part. So now I've got, uh, I've, let's, let's make it two phones. I'm going to have 100 minutes, because I hardly ever call, 1,000 text messages, 3, 000, uh, 3 gigabytes. That's $80 a month for three phones, by the way. If I use less, they refund me the money at the end of the month. If I use more, they charge me a very reasonable rate, basically the same rate that I'm already paying for. They move me up to the next plan. So you never get hit by a huge fee, and you never pay more than you need. This is Ting. Pay for what you use. No penalties for using more. No waste for using less. 4G phones. A great website that'll tell you exactly how much you save. Go use the spring calcul uh, the Ting calculator. It's spring, the Ting calculator, and you'll save fifty dollars on your device purchase when you go to ting.com/windows. So I this is the device I recommend uh, if you want the really the high end device. This is nice because originally when uh, when they started this they uh, didn't have all of the high end devices. Now they've got the best Android phone out there, the Galaxy S2. This is such a great phone. 465 but when you go to ting.com slash windows, take 50 bucks off that, right? They've got other devices, too. You can save even more. I am a big fan. Elliot is reinventing the cell phone business. I get tweets all the time. Here's one that came in last month. My Ting for the win. Ting FTW is their, uh, their Twitter handle. Phone bill was $22 last month. That's $100 less than AT&T. You're going to have similar savings. I'm telling you, you're going to love this. Here's an actual usage case. Family of four, four phones, 2,387 minutes. Four, obviously, teenagers in the family. 4,227 messages. A half a, a half a gig of data. My cost for all of that, 244 bucks on for eight for uh, in t including taxes and junk fees. That was uh, on uh, I guess AT and T doesn't say on Ting, 103 dollars a month. That's 140 dollars in savings. A marketing firm in Boston with six people says, six people together, we saved $12,000 a year for our business. No wait customer support. That's what uh, Elliot's famous for, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Eastern time. A uh, blog. They've got Twitter. They've got lots of information. They're run by geeks, so you know they're going to do it right. Ting.com slash Windows. Just check it out. And I'm sorry they don't have a Windows phone, Paul. I apologize. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk to Elliot and, uh, and see. I'm just going to hold my breath until I got one, but... This is such a good deal. It, uh, you know, I, I have a Ting phone. Actually, you know what I did with my Ting phone? I love it. And uh, But, you know, I have every carrier I have to because I review them all. And um, Jolie O'Dell from, um, uh, oh, I can't remember, uh, was here. And she doesn't have a phone. I said, look, try the Ting phone for a month on me. I don't think I'm ever going to see it again. <laughs> I think it's gone. <laughs> Venture Beat, thank you. She didn't have a phone. I said, well, come on. Well, you got to have a phone. How can you cover technology without a cell phone? So now she has a Ting phone. All right, moving right along. Let me go back to our, uh, where did I put it? I have too many screens open here. <laughs> Item number two in our conversation. Uh, will they or won't they? E-reader for Windows 8? What? Are you crazy? Whose idea was this? Is this yours, Mary Jo? Is this all Bill yours? Hill. It's mine, but it's not my idea. <laughs> <laughs> if someone a Windows built... 8 reader is not my idea. Yeah, whose idea? Don't blame me. Um, so this is weird. This keeps coming up over and over. Kevin Turner, again, who we mentioned Are previously. Are you talking like this... e-ink? Or like uh, a Kindle Fire? I'll give you his exact quote, and you guys say what you think is going on here. So he was Kevin Turner, COO, speaking at Convergence this week, and he, he has said this before. 
He said, Microsoft's going to be the first company on the planet to have a consistent UI, meaning Metro, yeah. from the smartphone to the tablet to the slate to the reader to the TV. <laughs> okay, where's this reader coming from? Uh, like, who's who's uh, building this thing? Uh, <laughs> and, and so everybody's This is now what happens like, when you let the marketing people out into the world, you know? <laughs> A and, unified and ecosystem enhanced and, by Microsoft Cloud Services. This is just the 21st century of uh, Windows everywhere, right? But see the yep. reader on there? Yeah, look at it. It's between a slate and a phone. Yeah. Yeah. I bet, so, I bet they're counting on third parties to make simple Windows yeah. devices that many people will just use for reading. I, I, I they're can't looking imagine... At, they're, they're looking at the Amazon uh, Fire, Kindle Fire, which yeah. which runs on yeah. Android but never says the word Android or Google anywhere. Not, not Windows Reader Edition? <laughs> oh, please, no. No. Can you imagine? No. <laughs> it's, it's just like Windows, except you can't create mm. anything with it. No. <laughs> you know? And so, okay, he, he never did say Windows 8. And so some people are like, maybe they, maybe this is going to be one of those Windows embedded things with a Metro UI. I'm right. like, oh, man, that would be equally confusing, right? Um, so, uh, you know, other people think it maybe it's just like a really high level way of them saying we're going to have the Kindle app on on uh, Windows tablets. I don't know what it is, but it's it keeps coming up. It's not going away and nobody can figure out what this thing is or who's building it or when it's going to show where, up. Where, where and when did he say this most recently? Convergence. He just said it this week at Convergence. Um, this he said slide is like the Rosetta Stone of Microsoft. <laughs> <laughs> that slide's from right. that slide isn't from this week. That slide is from when he said it before, which was Partner Show in 2011. So he's he has said this before and keeps reiterating the idea that there will be a reader with a Metro interface. Um, I think this is their know. mission statement. Our future is a unified ecosystem enhanced by Microsoft Cloud Services. The next line is Office 365, Windows Live. These are the services. Office 365, yeah. Windows Live, Bing, Zoom, Xbox Live. They've kind of merged those, though, right? Skype, Explorer 9. Yes, it says laptop, smartphone tablets, slash music. Thing. Smartphone music, TV. User so interface, music mouse, and keyboard, pen, handwriting, too. touch, remote. Yeah. I, I honestly think it, it makes more sense to them to make a dedicated music device than a dedicated e-reader. But well, they did that, didn't they? Yeah. Yeah, and it worked out great. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't going to say <laughs> anything, but uh, I think they should tried accomplish, that. Leo. <laughs> <laughs> I know a lot of people say, "Oh, so you're holding up an old slide and saying they still think this?" Well, they said it again this week. They still think this. This is a current. This is an older slide from last year, but they still think this is the vision and this e-reader thing is coming supposedly. And you you're saying that Bill Hill, who uh, was a clear type guy and, and is an e-reader guy, He's long gone Left. from Microsoft. Yep. Um, and then they also are Skype killing printer. the product Microsoft Reader, you know, which is what which you know was kind of like their though. ebook right. program. That opens up a nice so, brand for that yeah. ebook. It does. Gonna... Yep, <laughs> so do you think it's in partnership with that other those guys across the street in Seattle, uh, Amazon, mm -hmm. or... No. I know. I know. It's probably not with Barnes and Brandon Noble Watson is at suing. Amazon, right? <laughs> right. Right. Brandon Watson's there, and he, his job is to bring the Kindle uh, application cross-platform, including to Windows Eight. Oh. That's part of his. Job. Okay. Yep. Which they've um, done. Uh, they, there's already a yep. beta version. So this could available. simply mean it, you'll use uh, your tablet as a reader because it'll have the Kindle app on it. It Maybe. could, but it seems odd they would call out Reader. Yeah. Weird. You know, it doesn't say portable doesn't... game machine on a tablet. A lot of people use tablets just to play games. True. Hmm. Yep. So I'm it's a mystery. Curious. We don't really know. Um, and uh, Paul, there's there is an app though on Windows 8 Consumer Preview that's a reader, but it's a PDF reader, right? It's not a yeah. reader uh, like an e-reader. There's actually yeah. a, a kind of a hidden feature in, in Word uh, 15 that is all. It also reads PDFs now. Uh, the next version of Microsoft Word. Hmm. And it creates so they, PDFs, right? Uh, yes, you can. Uh, yeah, you can export the PDF. Yeah. All right, let's talk about Office fifteen since you brought it up. Okay. <laughs> what the heck is that mysterious tech preview build? Didn't mean to, but <laughs> you did. You started it, Paul. <laughs> is there a preview build? What is that? Yeah. So well, Microsoft released. A, <laughs> oh, I have it. Yes. So there's a. Yeah. A technical preview out in the wild uh, with some of Microsoft's partners, and then in the 
summer, I think in June, probably with TechEd, um, they're going to release a public beta. Um, the stuff that I've been looking at is just the desktop client, you know, the traditional suite, but there's new versions of Office 365 and uh, the Office web apps, uh, SharePoint, all this stuff. I mean, so everything's being revved in one big monstrous batch <laughs> of new cookies mm -hmm. for everybody. So it's very interesting. And there, there are some mysteries here as well. I mean, um, you know, the WOA tablets are going to come with some of these apps. Are they going to be the full-fledged apps or stripped-down versions? We don't know. Uh, we know that there's an Office Starter Edition today. I mean, will it be analogous to that? Not really clear. Uh, as Mary Jo asked here in the show notes, uh, Office Web Apps, you know, uh, yeah. hopefully dramatically improved, but I don't know. I haven't seen them personally, so I don't know. Um, yeah, the only thing I do know about Office Web Apps with Office 15 is Microsoft's um, changing how people use it, use those with SharePoint. Um, so they're actually not going to host them off of SharePoint anymore. There's going to be a dedicated Office Web App server. So that's something somewhat new that people will care Excellent. about who um, care about SharePoint. That large and thriving community. <laughs> yes. Yes. And uh, there, I guess there's some kind of a My Office service coming, uh, and I'm not really clear on what that is. I actually don't see it anywhere, so I'm not really sure what that means. But, um, And then, of course, you know, one of the big things is, you know, how does this stuff work on the tablet? And, and one of the things I've done is uh, on the Windows 8 tablet that I have, if you get rid of the taskbar... And you switch around between apps, you run you know, these apps full screen. I mean, it, they actually look like Metro style apps. And switching between, say, Excel to Word to the start screen to, you know, the Metro version of IE, all between those four apps, um, very seamless. I mean, it, it, they seem like the same thing. And so you can kind of see where um, Microsoft has actually done a really good job so far of making an application suite that looks at home on a tablet and then also works at, looks at home on a regular computer. Um, you know, like the one I use, you know, the regular desktop that I use. You can open up all the ribbons, have everything uh, displayed at the same time, and it's, you know, the same full-featured interface it ever was. A lot of people ask, though, you know, it, I, I keep getting this question over and over, is is Office 15 a Metro-style app? And the answer is no. Um, no it's no, no, a no. desktop app that has Metro look and feel to it, but it, it, yeah. it's not a Metro-style app. It's not wit written to WinRT. Um, yeah. It doesn't work like that they they didn't try to take that on i think that would have been a huge job to completely rewrite the whole office uh, yeah but suite. you know um two things along that, those lines that would be very interesting i think um I, I was doing a lot of the pc reset pc refresh stuff in windows 8 recently um for the book and writing about it and it occurred to me that i don't know how much work it would take but it would be an incredible thing for microsoft to provide an office 15 and potentially offer to uh, you know, like tier one OEMs, like o Adobe or whatever, the ability to have their Windows applications be included in that process. So that if you were to uh, run PC refresh against your computer, Office would actually come back as part of it. Um, I don't know how they're going to handle that in WOA because Office includes those applications. So apparently they are going to figure out a way to make that work for them. I mean, why not for everybody? Um, I think that would be something really incredible. And when you combine that with the fact that they just kind of look like Metro apps, um, you know, it, it would make for a more seamless experience. But but the other one concerns OneNote, and, and you were asking about rumors whether OneNote is going to be available as a Metro-style app. You know, OneNote is actually unique among the Office 15 apps in that by default on a tablet, it runs full screen with no ribbon, and it looks more like an immersive experience. And I, I don't know this for a fact, but just based on the fact that I don't see it in the build, um, I wouldn't be surprised to discover that those rumors are just based on that because it looks different, and I, I think it's just I think it's just like the other apps. I mean, I, I don't know I don't know what the benefit to having a OneNote as a Metro app would be because, frankly, the way they've engineered this version anyway, your notebooks are always in the cloud, so you're getting a lot of the benefit that you know, like a um, a new app that did that sort of uh, functionality would have anyway. So. I'm not yeah. really, I don't, I don't, I just don't get why they would do that for that one app. But Unless it was like a proof point, right? Like they want to show you, we, we yeah. are thinking about what um, a metro, a true metro style version of our apps would look like. And here's an example is OneNote. Um, it's such a curious, yeah, yeah I see yeah. what you're saying. It, but, but then why wouldn't OneNote be, is, or maybe it is, I actually don't remember. Is OneNote one of the apps that's included on WOA? It is. And those are all desktop yeah. apps too, right? So, yeah. yeah. 
Um, the other the other interesting little side note about um, OneNote 2 in Office 15 is, I, I don't know if you remember this, but um, when we saw the first leaks of Office 15, there was an, a mystery app that people were talking about that was codenamed Maria that was supposed to be um, something like you could put all your multimedia information in one place. It almost looked like the courier, um, you know, that kind of style of pulling all the different bits of information into um, mm -hmm. one app where you could have them all accessible to you beyond what you can do in OneNote already. Um, and from what I'm hearing now, it's looking increasingly like Maria is built into OneNote 15. It's not going to be its own app. Um, and it's also going to let you um, cut and paste in Visio diagrams and all um, and Excel files, which I don't believe you can do right now in OneNote. Um, so... It sounds like that may not be a separate app like we thought it was going to be. And instead, it'll be a feature of OneNote 15 based based on early tech preview feedback we're hearing. Okay. When it goes silent like that, I just assume you want to move on. <laughs> <laughs> You, Unless you want to ask any pithy questions. I on have one no note. pithy <laughs> questions. I got one note, like one note, happy about one note. God bless one note. All hail one note. All hail one note. Hail the one the note that rules us all. Uh, I should sing, I should break out David Bowie's ch 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 changes. The tech industry full of uh, movement always. Yahoo uh, fires everybody in their research division in New York City. Microsoft, Google, and Facebook snap them up like that. Uh, in fact, uh, the Microsoft uh, just got Yahoo's chief scientist. Um, yes. They yep. they have yep. a great guy that they got from Yahoo. Was it Chi Lu for a search? Yep. And yep. now who's this? This is Raghu Ramakrishnan. Um, who was chief scientist at Yahoo, now is going to be a tech fellow in the server and tools business at Microsoft. And it's really interesting what he's going to work on. He's going to work on integrating big data. Oh boy. Um, so it's probably some of the Hadoop stuff uh, with server and SQL server. So, uh, yeah, he's, he's on board already. And Microsoft announced that this week. That's a pretty big hire. For them. I think Yahoo's just decided they're going to be a content company and just not I have any so. more researchers or, or programmers yeah. or anything. We're just, we're a magazine. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we're a magazine. We're a magazine. <laughs> we don't, what do we need a chief scientist for? We're a magazine now. Of course, it's Yahoo, so they'll probably make it a print magazine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they did. Remember <laughs> Yahoo Internet Life? They yeah. had a print magazine. Right. Yeah, um, totally forgot about that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, also, uh, new. Um, Head of marketing and advertising at Windows Phone. That must be a Pauly. No, Pauly. but no, <laughs> actually, sorry, but you want MJ who, to who do was it? The, who was the head of marketing and advertising before? Do you remember? Or do you have... Yeah, it, I know sorry. they've had so it's many. Kind of changes. a revolving door. Uh, yeah, yeah, it has been. So the latest one was Occam Berg. Um, oh yeah, who who was the head of Windows Phone marketing until I think it was last December. Um, okay. So yeah, he was he was the most recent one, and uh, I'm looking for the guy's name. Tom Gruller. Totally Gruller is Tom Gruller. Yeah. Yes, Tom Gruller, who is the guy who was behind the Can you hear Can you hear me now? Yes. Uh, advertising campaign. I can hear you. You mean at Verizon? Yes. He wow. Was. Oh, he's McCann. Oh, you know he was a McCann Erickson. McCann, right? Ah, he was so McCann. he was an ad guy yeah. at. Oh, that was a good yeah. campaign. Will the yeah. Will the nerd guy move over? <laughs> can you hear me now hey i'm talking on a windows phone can you hear me now <laughs> not on verizon yeah no kidding isn't that interesting there is no windows yeah. phone yeah hello yeah. can you no that's yeah, there's don't, one don't, verizon don't the windows phone, phone on the table I'm sorry that wasn't nice <laughs> there's one verizon windows phone and maybe this guy will be the guy who can help unlock us to getting yeah, a second yeah yeah, yeah yeah maybe he was also MasterCard Kohl's, according to Mary Jo's article on uh, ZDNet, all about Microsoft.com. MasterCard Kohl's and Sony Ericsson. So he does have some phone experience. So yes. some MasterCard Kohl's sounds like a character on games of <laughs> Game of Thrones. <laughs> MasterCard Kohl, Lord Kohl. <laughs> exactly. Uh, but Sony Ericsson, that's interesting. So he and this is and he was a world group. So he was responsible for global marketing. Um, yeah. And that is very important, obviously, to Microsoft. Yes, they really need help on that front, as everybody knows all too well. So 
you know, it's like everyone's like, oh, great, that guy's got a big job ahead of him. Well, yeah, he does have a big job ahead of him, but at least this guy's got some telco jobs. So that's that's a good sign. And as you as you point out, well, and he's an ad guy. He's an ad guy. He's an ad guy. (laughs) That's what they need. It's all about, uh, you know, slick advertising. Although I have to say the Windows Phone ads are among the best Microsoft's ever done. But does anyone even know what they are? I mean... I agree with you. They've made some good. I love them, but uh, yeah, you, sh- you should have said, Paul, you should have said, really? Really? Yeah. Because yeah. that's the tagline <laughs> when the guy drops the phone into the uh, urinal. Yeah. yeah, no, those are good. But they're weird because they're saying, uh, you guys are too interested in your phones. You really shouldn't be. Yeah, and that and is a strange that message. People phones will love this phone. Yeah, if you really don't care about your you phone, know? if you're not, if you don't want to be engaged with your phone. I don't phone, give a crap about phones. We got one for you. Phone. <laughs> so that maybe, it maybe was the wrong yeah, message yeah. to send. I, I hear you. I hear you. But I just thought they were clever. They were well made. And they certainly were grabbing. Uh, better than the Bing ads, which just still make me think I've gone psychotic. They're um, doing more of those smoked by Windows phone ads on the web too now. I don't know if you've seen those, Leah, where no. they've got Ben Rudolph, a guy named Ben Rudolph, who's uh, Ben the PC guy on Twitter. He he goes around and he offers people a hundred bucks if their phone can beat Windows phone and different kinds of challenges. Um, and then they tape them. And it's like a lot of people who are just stunned when Windows phone beats them, like posting to Facebook or updating something on Twitter. So... Yeah, it's that's a good campaign too because I, I it's just like normal people. I assume one of the tasks people. they don't do is download and then play the latest Angry Birds game. <laughs> they do okay, not here it do is. That. Here it is. Watch. Hey, I'm Ben, and today we're betting people a hundred dollars that Windows Phone is simply faster at the everyday stuff they do on their smartphones. What kind of phone do you have? I have the HTC Evo 3D. I have a Motorola H, actually. Motorola H, that's a pretty good phone. You've got a Samsung Galaxy S2. Nick has a Galaxy Nexus, correct? Wow, Flagship these are the top of, of the line. Flagship phone of Google. Android phone, pretty good phone. This is good. You know what I like you about like it? It, oh, it, it speaks it's directly good. to people who care about phones. Yep. Strong yep. words from our friend Justin. Why don't we do this? Why don't we try taking a picture? Uh-huh. Well, so it helps that this guy is an 80. So why don't we look for someplace nearby? Is an 80? Like yeah. What's yeah. that mean? And then we'll pull up he's a young guy. Oh. Freddy yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? He looks like a hipster. <laughs> he's, he's got no hair, but it's because he shaves his head, so it's okay. It's a little too quick edited, so I didn't really get to see that it actually beat... Well, I, yeah. I think we can assume they're not lying, Leo. But. <laughs> sure we can. <laughs> uh, uh, Even a- Apple's ads are edited for time sequence or whatever they call yeah. it. Boom. Done. Yeah. Posting to Facebook. I got you by a little Smoke. bit. Done. That's good. That's good. Wow. I just haven't even put Twitter up yet. Let me find Twitter in my home screen. What do you mean you're already done? <laughs> that's good. All right, those are good. I have 127 apps on this phone. Now those are that's not that's a YouTube campaign though. It's not an ad yeah, campaign. Not, obviously, it's way too TV long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think that that's the kind of thing, at least to reach our our group, the geeks. That's what you need yeah. to do. I like him. I yeah. like Ben Riddle. Yeah. So he's good. Yeah. Uh, okay. I'm just mad at Zappos, but I'm not going to talk about it. So go ahead. Well, what's wrong? What I'm happened? just mad. I'm trying to buy some freaking shoes. <laughs> and, you know, you remember Zappos got hacked, right? Yeah. And so they send emails out to everybody saying, you have to change your password. So I went and I tried to change my password. I have now been trying for 24 hours to buy shoes on Zappos, and I cannot get the password reset email. <laughs> I've checked every spam filter. They won't send it to me. And it's like... This is supposed to be the famous company that uh, cares about its customers, and they just lost one. You know? Wow. Stupid. This is why I shop at Ross. Yeah, I'm going to Ross. Brand names for less, baby. <laughs> Kohl's. That Tom Grunfungu. He, that's... Oh, help you God. Out. So what we didn't say is this was the week that the Lumion 800 or 900, whatever it was, the new, the, the monster phone came out. Uh, except that it didn't. Oh, it didn't. What? <laughs> we know, but we know what we know when it's coming. Leo. What happened? We don't know what happened. It was oh, supposed to be March 18th. It's supposed to be we four days ago. Yep. And and so, nothing. According to a source who has been good in the past, um, but AT and T will have an announcement on Monday that will reveal the date, which is almost certainly going to be April eighth, and uh, the price will in fact be ninety nine dollars, as we previously reported. Ah, how much? That's what's coming. 99 bucks. 99. What? 90, 
Yeah. When 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 you're seeing the top of the line, like the Galaxy Note, sell for three hundred dollars with a two years contract, they're offering it for a mere ninety nine dollars. Yes, yeah. stunning. That's what I've heard. That well, would we, that would set that the was world in on its that head. That was in that documentation we talked about months ago, whatever right. that was, December or January. But I mean, this is AT and T. Remember now, AT and T selling this Galaxy Note for three hundred dollars yep. subsidized. You're saying because I mean, tell you, there's a lot of people who will go in saying, "I want the Note." Wait a minute, ninety nine bucks for the Lumia yeah. nine hundred? Well, it doesn't come with a pen. <laughs> oh, gee. So, <laughs> oh well, then forget it. <laughs> that's going to be a hundred bucks right there. No, no, seriously, that's pretty. That's pretty spectacular. If they yeah. can do that price, that is the kind of thing we need. Yeah. I don't know yeah. why we. It's not my team. But that's the kind of thing you need. It is your team, Leo. <laughs> that's my team for this it's hour and a half. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, that's the kind of thing uh, Microsoft needs to get on the map here. Yeah. Yep. Yep. I agree. Uh, and they also did, uh, um, they did launch Windows Phone in um, China and Brazil this week, though. Mm. Um, so... That's pretty huge. I mean, like we're all talking about U.S., but I mean, that's, no, no, that's those a are big the market. huge markets. Yeah, right? that's a big. Yeah. Those are two big well, markets. And by the way, huge to the tune of uh, there will be more smartphones sold in China this year than in the United States. Right. That's the first. Not time. just huge, like yep. secondary markets, like no. the largest market. Number for smartphones one. In the world. Yep. Yeah. Number one. Wow, that's that's great. It's well, neat because they uh, obviously they have to. Um, localize it for the language and they have to remake apps and all that kind of stuff but they also had to change a bunch of the integration you know windows phone has that great integration which is why uh, they're able to smoke those other phones right so you can integrate with twitter and facebook and linkedin and so forth uh it turns out those services are not legal in china so Ooh. they actually changed the integration in windows phone to match the online services that people actually use in china so not it's not an american phone that you're going to use in china it's a, a phone that has been localized for you but also integrates with the services that matter to you as a as a user in that country. So uh, they sound pretty cool. I don't think I'll ever have a chance to try one here um, in the United States, but I think it's neat what they've done. And uh, certainly it took a while, but, um, you know, 15 months or so in to the Windows Phone phenomena, as I call it, um, <laughs> they are, mm -hmm. you know, they have phones for China. So that's cool. Yeah, and, and uh, Microsoft MVP from Brazil, uh, Rodolfo Carmo, he was sending Paul and I photos from Brazil today um, of the launch of the Lumia 710 and the 900. And it looks pretty huge. I mean, it's on the front page of every newspaper. It's like all over the place mm. there. So Smart. I, it's, we're just not used to seeing Windows Phone ads here in yeah. the U.S. Well, you know, so I think, do you think it's Nokia, though? That <laughs> it is Nokia. It is. it is. When you go to yeah. Europe, you see Nokia yeah. ads at every airport all over the place, everywhere. Yep. Yep. So it is clearly an Nokia. They know how to market, though. I mean, uh, and they're putting some energy. Now, I heard, though, that they were going to modify the UI. Nokia was. Yeah. Is that so, true? There rumor. were rumors about that. Um, but I believe that, I mean, it, there were screenshots, supposedly, but this is what it's going to look like or right, whatever. Right. Um, and then someone had said that that was part of their agreement with Microsoft. But I'm not really sure we're privy to... All of the agreements. I, I just know that some of the enhancements that Nokia will work on for Windows Phone will make their way back to other OEMs. You know, they'll, they'll appear in the software, so anyone can use them. But of course, Nokia is going to do their own thing in some ways as well. Um, I yeah, that's the question: is how much? I mean, a little customization, sure. But yeah, I don't think they're going to get let them replace the Metro home screen with something different, which is what I believe that those they pictures were shown. Very different. Yeah. Yeah, I that think those were more like sense. artist renderings and concepts by somebody who actually um, no longer works for Nokia, I believe. It oh, was kind of oh, like, yeah. here's some things you could do if you right, wanted to right. go this way. But I, I, I don't think I, yeah. I see anything. I like Metro, but you got to get rid of those squares. Could you do yeah, that? Yeah, I don't like those squares. You know, <laughs> it's like, well, uh, that's kind of the whole point of the Metro thing. <laughs> Uh, finally, big news. Chrome outpaces Internet Explorer for the first time ever. Maybe. <laughs> it depends and, and for only one day <laughs> for one day but uh Which one is day so bizarre you know, i know it's, uh, yeah. it was like this blip so what happened i it was really strange i mean uh, microsoft sent out something on sunday they alerted me via email about it and they had a blog post where they questioned how stat counter measures things and they spelled out why you know the various reasons why this web analytics company maybe doesn't do things that it feels are accurate, you know, net applications being the other major one. It was kind of weird because it wasn't tied to anything. And then on Wednesday, StatCounter announced that for one day on Sunday, coincidentally or not, uh, Chrome had more usage on the web than IE did. Uh, and 
the implication was that maybe people are using IE at work during the week, but oh, when they come home, that weekend. when they can pick the browser yeah. they really want, yeah, you know, that's maybe the first indication we're seeing of that. Right. Um, so I wrote a story about it, and I, and as I would, you know, as I do for these kinds of things, I don't state. You know, a uh, story about Chrome being number one was incorrect. I, I, you know, Microsoft says this is incorrect, but Stack Counter actually contacted me and they had their own little list of data, you know. So I actually ended up writing a second story about how they uh, are fighting back against this argument and they're defending the way that they gather data, of course, and explain some things. And they also point out some issues that Microsoft didn't raise, which they think are relevant to this discussion. But um, I don't know who to believe or, 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 you know, where the truth lies, but. Um, obviously, there's a trend occurring with web browsers where overall IE has been on a, a slow but fairly steady decline. Um, IE 9, you know, the latest version on Windows 7 is doing very, very well, which is what Microsoft likes to focus on. Um, but yeah, so there you go. I don't know. I can't. I, all I can do is present both sides and then uh, I guess they can duke it out themselves. Uh, let's see. Let's take a little break. Uh, when we come back, you're going to do your tip, Paul. Mary Jo's got a code word of the week, an enterprise pick of the week. But mm -hmm. uh, before we do either of those, I think we should do an audible pick. Poor Paul. <laughs> he's always what? he's well. You you know you always have every every week. You you give me a new audible pick, and then we never have mm -hmm. an audible ad. But we do have one today. Oh, I see. I'm very pl proud to say. They lo Audible loves Paul because uh, Paul, like me, is an Audible fanatic. And so, uh, mm -hmm. when we when we when you hear an Audible ad for me or Paul, you're not it's you're hearing an honest endorsement of something we absolutely love. Audible, as you probably know, is the audio bookstore with over a hundred thousand titles, pretty much everything. When it comes out now on uh, uh, a day and date of publishing, almost everybody now does an audio book on Audible.com. It's just you know, it's huge. It's a big, important part. Baratunde's new book when it came out, How to Be Black. Baratunde made sure that he <laughs> had read it and it was out on this. You know, it's a great book, by the way, if you haven't read it. it. It was out and he had read it and it was available the same day the other versions were. That's how it works. Um, you know, and such great stuff. Bestsellers, fiction and nonfiction, history. Ooh, The Secret Life of Marilyn Monroe. Actually, they have a whole list here. The Five Secret Lives. Secret Life of Pronouns, <laughs> Secret Life of Bees, The Secret Life of Marilyn Monroe, The Secret Life of the Grown-Up Brain, and The Secret Life, this is the one I'm going to get, of Dust. <laughs> From Cosmos to the Kitchen Counter. <laughs> oh. um, but Paul has a better recommendation, and actually I'm, I'm down with this one because I'm a big John le Carre fan. Yeah, this is kind of an oldie but a goodie. We were talking before the show started about um, Tinker, Tinker Taylor, Taylor. Soldier yep. Spy, but yep. um, because you know their, their movie was out recently over the winter, I think, and the movie is now available on iTunes and it's fantastic. I but can't. I'm watching it tonight. Tonight's my night. And there's a the dramatized same, version of that, by the way, on Audible, yes, which I'll have to listen right. to. Yeah. So it, actually, another dramatized version is what I'm going to be recommending today, which is the Russia House. Another. Cold War era spy novel by John Le Carre. Um, also, full cast dramatization. Probably about it the looks same like group. they've done all of these. Yeah, it's called the Smiley yeah. Radio Play. So all this, the Smiley Saga is uh, uh, John Le Carre's series of books about uh, Smiley, who of course mm -hmm. is the hero of Tinker Taylor. Um, right. So how are these? Because you know I've seen these and I'm wondering. They're good. So the the only problem is if uh, you know uh, the Russia House like Tinker Taylor was made into a movie, a major movie with right. famous actors and everything. So I I tend to now. Think of those people as the characters. Right. Um, uh, in the case of the Russia House, it was um, uh, Sean Connery and Michelle Pfeiffer are, are in it. It's a right. I, it's a favorite movie of mine. The, these are kind of slow boil stories. You know, they're not modern John Woo movie type things. No, I mean, no, is, no. That's what I love about John Le Carre. They're subtle. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and they're beautiful. excellent. And, oh, and yeah. words matter. And yep. what people yep. do, but you really have to pay attention. Yep. And um, so what it is basically is a BBC radio dramatization with a full cast. It's not two or three people. It's it's a it's a full cast of people. Oh, that's and, neat. Um, it's it's just such a great story. It's a favorite of mine. I the first time I read this, I was in Germany, and it was one of those share a book type deals at a bed and breakfast where you could leave a book and yeah, take yeah, a book. Yeah. And I read this driving around uh, Beat up Germany. Old paperback. And I, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Loved it. Just yeah, love it. And yeah. it, it's just an absolute. So class. there are three ways you could you can you know consume something like this. You could read the unabridged original with all the words. You could listen to this three hour and eleven minute adaptation from BBC Four, or you could mm -hmm. watch the movie, which is the shortest of all. I, I would. I'm going to have to do. Uh, well, let me listen. Can we listen? Three, you should do you all should three. Do them in reverse order. Exactly. You know, I, I, 
in the case of good movies, um, in the Russia House and, and actually Tinker Tailor both fall in this category, um, that's a good start for the story. And if you like it, you can go read the book and there's a lot more right. I- occurring there. Nuance. And it's a much more, yes, it's a yeah. much more complete story uh, that you're going to get. Let me play a little bit of this. Make head or tail of them. I think you should hand them over to someone who can. Hmm? Really? Definitely. I'd get them over to the Russia House pretty damn quick. Oh, my Lord. I love it. So the reason that it, it's beautiful that the BBC this does is this great. is because the they involve the spy agencies, primarily of the UK. The, the United States factors into both of those books that we're talking about. But it's primarily about the UK, so it's it's appropriate somehow that these guys would all be British. This is fantastic. And it just makes it more of the of the correct feel, I guess. So you can get this absolutely free. All you have to do is go to audible.com slash windows. The gold account awaits you. Uh, that is a book a month, and your first credit is free. Most books are one credit. This one is. Uh, and it's yours to keep forever. You can cancel at any time, so you don't have to pay a penny if you don't want to. But I think you will. In fact, I have a feeling you're going to go through these like candy. I, I could see I'm going to get hooked on these dramatizations. The Looking Glass War, The Secret Pilgrim, The Perfect Spy, Tinker Tailor. Wow. Yep. And start with The Russia House. It's a BBC4 dramatization. If you like radio theater or theater of any kind, or if you like John le Carré, this is a must. Audible.com slash windows and we thank them so much for their support i i do feel i don't know i have no inside information but i was told by somebody who claimed to have inside information that this is the month that we will see an audible app for windows phone oh i have it do you <laughs> yes i do so i wasn't uh, it's, uh, it's come it's coming soon yes yay is it yes. is it like the iphone or uh, android version it's a lot like it i Good. guess i mean it obviously looks like a you know, yeah it's Windows metro app. it works very well there's some <sighs> missing bits i mean it doesn't do Sped up audio playback, that kind of thing, but um, that looks fantastic. very complete overall. Yeah, it looks good. The nice thing is on these apps on the phones is you get the whole library, so you can say, you know, oh, yeah. I, I, you know, because I have like five hundred books in my library, so I could go back and oh, that's great. I'm so happy to hear that. Of course, all the devices, Audible.com, and now soon Windows Phone, Audible.com/slash/Windows. And now let's uh, start with you, Paul Thorat, and uh, your tip of the week. Yeah, my tip, uh, <laughs> tip and pick this week are both based on some issues I had with Windows 8 uh, recently. Uh, the tip, I'm not sure who to credit this with originally, but I, I read about it in laptopmag.com. Um, I, I suspect they didn't originate it. But uh, it turns out that you can boot directly to the desktop in Windows 8, sort of, um, and using uh, the instructions they have here. Um, I say sort of because the truth is the the start screen loads, and then after a pause, the desktop loads. But, I mean, if what you're looking for is just going directly to the desktop, I think this is today about as close as you can get to that. Um, there's been a lot of stuff online. You know, people are reacting in bad ways to the ways that Windows 8 works, you know. And there have been utilities and and tips about, you know, adding the start button back and putting the old start menu back. I, I feel that moving to the desktop is a completely different type of thing. It's It's not you know, replacing a feature with something else. Because ultimately, as I do every day, I boot into Windows 8, I log in, I hit the start screen, I immediately hit the, you know, like, well, the Windows key, de- Windows key D for the desktop, and I go to the desktop, because that's where I work in. Um, skipping that step where you go to the start screen, doesn't. it's not replacing it, it's still there. I still use it for search, I still use it for all the other things that are related to the system level tasks. Whereas replacing the start screen with a start menu is replacing that thing. And, and right. that's not Windows 8. I mean, this is not uh, obviating the point of Windows 8. It's just allowing it to be a little a little bit more efficient. So I feel like this is a, an okay thing for people to do. I mean, I think people who go to the effort to like download and install Windows 8 and then immediately get rid of the start uh, screen are kind of, you know, it's kind of idiotic. But um, this type of thing to me is not just okay, but it, it helps you be more efficient on a desktop computer or a laptop, you know, where you're going to be on the desktop. So Interesting. It does work. And um, that's a, kind of an interesting tip. So even if Microsoft doesn't add the, the policies, which I think they will uh, eventually, to make this a little more seamless, we do have a way to skip by the start screen. That's cool. That's yeah. nice. Yeah. So that's one is uh, boot. Yeah, the other, one, the other one, the, the pick is for a tool called Unlocker. And 
this is a long-standing bug in Windows, and a lot of people who have written back to me are saying, you know, you should be blaming the application. I recommend now. this. I've been recommending this for years. <laughs> yeah, this is actually a really bad Windows bug, and it's been around forever. Yeah. And I'm a little curious yeah. if Microsoft hasn't um, fixed it, but it basically involves this thing where you're working with some files, and now you want to archive them or move them somewhere or delete them or whatever you want to do, and it says, no, this thing's being in use by another program. They're busy. Now, depending on what you're doing. Um, you might be able to know, figure out what it is. I know in my case, I work with a lot of images that I upload to my website, and when it doesn't let me move or delete an image file, it's because right. Photoshop is still running. Right. So if I close Photoshop, the lock is unleashed, uh, un, un, uh, or the lock is unlocked, I guess, and I can then delete, move, copy the file, whatever it is. Um, this tool lets you do this immediately and without worrying about closing the applications and all that kind of stuff. Because sometimes, honestly, it takes me a little while sometimes to figure out what it might be causing it. Chrome does this sometimes. Uh, Chrome is the application I use to actually upload the files. That's a something that only has been happening in Windows 8. It wasn't an issue in Windows 7. I don't know if it's a Chrome update or Windows 8 that's doing it. It doesn't really matter to me, but you just kind of want to move on with life. So Unlocker is a, a neat little app. It's free. You got to be careful when you're downloading and installing it because, it, A, that website, it takes forever to figure out where to download it. And then when you do install it, you want to uncheck the things to install the toolbar and all that kind of junk. But the actual application itself works fantastically well and does exactly what you want it to do, which is unlock those files so you can do what you want it to do in the first place. All right. Very cool. And it works in Windows 8. And it's been around for uh, ages oh, and ages and ages. Yeah. And I, it, it, you as, know, as has the bug, yes. It, as has the bug. And it comes up, uh, you know, I would say every six months on the radio show, somebody says, I can't. My files yep. are busy. Reboot. I rebooted. It's still busy. Unlocker. I just, it's, <laughs> it has been the bane of my existence yeah. Yeah. for as long as yeah. I've and doing what I do, yeah. I, you know, it's I, I don't know how Unlocker works, but um, I guess it's just a permissions bug or something. It unlocks things, Leo. That's yeah. how it works. It's magic. <laughs> it's magic. Yeah. I don't yeah. know, but it works. And now we go to Mary Jo Foley for our Enterprise, much hotly awaited Enterprise pick of the week. Um, so I'm going to talk about something in SharePoint 15, since we talked about Office mm -hmm. 15 mm -hmm. earlier. Mm -hmm. um, and there's, I don't know if you remember, Leo, we talked about... Um, very uh, about two or three weeks ago, there there were some leaks about what's going to be in SharePoint 15, and we heard there might be some education app. Um, there is, in fact, an education app we we now know, and it's called Office for Education 15. It's an app that's going to be built on top of SharePoint 15, and I'm going to read you the the little blurb about it that I know. Um, it allows education institutions to manage, document, track, report, classroom, and e-learning activity. It's for faculty and students to preview and collaborate on tasks, share documents, create websites for study groups and courses, et cetera. So basically they're taking SharePoint and saying, you know, why, why should we only have office client be something that's adapted for the student and academic market? Why not have something on the server side of office for that market? And this is what's going to be coming. Um, I believe as part of SharePoint 15, probably built into SharePoint 15, or maybe it'll be a separate SKU. Not totally sure on that, but. Yeah, so there cool. it is. Very cool. And uh, do you have a code name for us? I do. Um, code name pick of the week is something I made my code name pick of the week months ago. It was called Lakeview. And at the time, I was told Lakeview was the code name for Silverlight on Xbox. And what's really funny and made me revisit this this week is the code name Lakeview resurfaced again this week. Hmm. Um, Michael Gillett, um, who's a Microsoft enthusiast, found this. And Lakeview is listed as the code name for the BBC iPlayer that huh. debuted this week huh. for for um, Xbox. So there's so, an iPlayer for Xbox. Is it, a, it? Can I use it outside the BB outside of England? Uh, it's for the UK market, I believe. Oh, okay. uh, I don't yeah. know if you can use yeah. it inside. No, you can't. Uh, but you can't. It, what's cool about it is it's free. You got my hopes it's up. Free for all Xbox users in the UK. Um, so it's not just Xbox Gold Live. Uh, gold users who get that for free. Um, but it's interesting to me that it's codenamed Lakeview because huh. uh, that makes me wonder, you know, it, maybe, is maybe. was Lakeview always Silverlight for Xbox <laughs> or was it originally was just going to be an app? Yeah. What's, what's it all about? Um, and I, I wondered, I asked Michael, is you know, so does this mean this app is built on Silverlight? And he was looking into that. I don't think he ever found out. I bet it is. This is I bet it is. Xbox supports Silverlight, right? Of course it does. Yes. Of course it does. It does. If it didn't, nothing would work. <laughs> Absolutely does. Uh, very good. 
ladies and gentlemen, I think we've concluded this uh, portion of our fabulous Windows Weekly show. Paul Therott writes for the Super Site for Windows. He is the Super Site for Windows, winsupersite.com, also news editor for Windows IT Pro, an analyst with Penton Media and the author of the fabulous Windows 7 Secrets, available in bookstores now. I left that out. The see, see, you maybe you should call this the secret life of Windows. Then you could be in that list, along with dust. <laughs> Windows is much like dust, Leo. It's everywhere. <laughs> it creeps. It creeps under your windowsill. <laughs> yeah. Windows 7 Secrets, and soon uh, Windows 8 Secrets as well. He's a busy, busy yes. guy working on it right now. Is, is, 25% done. October? Yep. We're, all, we're all in agreement now, October? I don't know if we're all in agreement right now, but that's the... That seems that's, the consensus. Seems to be the, yeah. Yeah. And of course, your, your book will come out exactly the yes. same time. The day and date. That's the hope. Mary Jo Foley, she blogs like every three seconds at allaboutmicrosoft.com for ZDNet. And you'll find her... Great material there. It is really the backbone of this show, along with Paul's posts on Win Super Site. So if you, you know, you could probably just skip this show, read their blogs, and you really, you know, you'd be, you'd be set. <laughs> All you'd be missing uh, is my snark. So it's it's the reason you're not the head of marketing at anything. <laughs> <laughs> I'm too honest. No, you want the you first of all you want to watch live because it's always fun. Eleven a.m. Pacific, two p.m. Eastern time at twit.tv. Make a note: next week we're moving to Friday at four p.m. Eastern, one p.m. Pacific, uh, because Paul's en route. What are you doing in Vegas? Windows Connections. Ah. So I'll be there on Tuesday and Wednesday all day. So we'll have a report from Windows Connections on Friday. Um, you can also get the show anytime you miss it. We make audio and video available at twit.tv or subscribe in the Zoom Marketplace or whatever it's called nowadays. What is it? Zoom Music? Microsoft Music? Windows Music? Don't don't, don't even worry about it because it's going to be something <laughs> different again. in another two months. It's just fabulous on your Lumia 900. Let me tell you. Uh, you can also get it uh, everywhere. Elf podcasts are aggregated. But do get the show. Please subscribe because that way you won't miss an episode. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Mary Jenner. And we'll see you next week on Windows Weekly. Remember, Friday, 1 o'clock Pacific.